Drape molding is a very basic way of working with slabs of clay, and this video is going to show three different examples of how I have molded three different forms. Now I use three different types of molds. One is a plaster mold. This is a mold that I made in a previous video. If you wanted to see how I did that, you can check out that video. And I made that one square. I show a simple way to do that. Then I the next mold here, this is a round mold, which is wood, and it is made by bamboo tools. There will be a link for that in the video description, and I made the, the large round platter with that one. And then the other one here, this is an oval mold by GR Pottery Molds, and I made the elongated oval there. Now, all three of these show a foot ring. Okay, so if I pick this up, I can show you. So a foot ring, kind of picks it up off the table as you can see they're up off the table a little bit and I could have used a GR Pottery Forms foot maker but I didn't have one so I kind of made something that was very similar it's just a little block of wood where I put a couple nails in it now you can see the two nails uh, one is straight one is angled the angled one produces a thicker uh, piece right up here, the, the part next to the block, that's the part that will go against the pop bottom and then the narrow part will be the part that it actually sits on. I show how I use this and how I made the foot and another thing that I show is I do show how I made these handles. Now the handles on this oval one are currently loose um, because the handles are actually a little bit more plastic than the tray itself. So I have two choices. I can either attach the handles when they get to be the same moisture as the tray or I could fire the handles loose like this. And the advantage to firing loose is when I go to glaze I can actually dip the handle separately from the tray or brush it separately from the tray and then when I fire it I can just stick them on and it will fuse together. So if you would like to learn a little bit a little bit more about slab drape molding, let's go. I have already rolled the clay slabs off camera, but now I am ribbing it with a mud tools rib. If you need to see how to roll something, you can watch another video that I have. Now I have placed the slab onto a thick piece of foam rubber, and this is the GR Pottery Forms mold. I am pressing down and flipping the mold, and that helps to give you a nice impression. Now, because this is a narrow mold, I'm going to place something underneath it so it allows the clay to dangle off. This is one way that you could do this. I'm going to be trimming it evenly, but if I wanted maybe a flat rim, I would have set it on a board. But now I'm taking the needle tool and I run it underneath the bottom edge of that mold. Be very careful not to like dig into the mold with the point of the tool. You're always using the side of the needle tool when you go to cut. Now that will just set to the side. This next one I am going to be draping it over the large plaster mold that I made and for this one I'm going to make it square. So I have previously folded a piece of construction paper in quarters and I have squared it but kind of a rounded square. Now I'm just trimming this out again with a needle tool and then I will have my rounded square that I'm going to be placing on there. So as you see here, it's just a quartered piece of paper that I have uh, cut. Now I'm going to put that back in the middle and drape it on there, trying to get it about in the center. And then I'm just going to rib it onto the mold a little bit. I'll still tweak the edges after it gets leather hard. And this third one is going to be the bamboo tools mold. I will put a link in the video description. The name of the company is bamboo tools. Um, it's just a, a wood mold. But again, I'm ribbing this. Now this one I'm going to be cutting round on the mold similarly to the way I did the GR pottery mold. And you can see that the bamboo tools mold does have a, a base to it that allows the clay to hang freely off the sides. I will trim it with the needle tool up against the bottom edge of the mold again, just like I did before, being careful not to scratch the mold. Then I will set all three of these to the side until they get closer to leather hard. 
Now the forms are leather hard and I am going to be creating the foot ring on them. For this I'm going to be using the little foot maker that I made but GR Pottery Forms does actually sell one and I'm cutting the strips and remember that one end is a little bit fatter than the other and the part that's fatter is going to go up against the pot. So I'm just cutting um, several strips here so I can put feet on all of these. Now I'm going to score where I'm going to attach the foot and then I'm going to score the fat end or the fat side I should say and then I'm going to place that on there. I'm beveling the ends of the strips so as I put them together the bevels will overlap and meet. Unfortunately that one was a little bit shy so I have to take a, a third little section also beveled, scored and slipped, placed in there. And then I'm kind of compressing it with wet fingers. You can see I've added water with my fingertips and I'm going around and compressing and kind of sealing where the edges are going together. I use a paintbrush and seal it as well. This one I'm marking out where I want the foot to be and I'm making this foot square-ish. Again kind of uh, expanded like the form of the pot itself. And you can see again, I'm scoring the length of the foot ring as well. And then I will add some slip over the scoring and add the foot ring. And again, at the corners, I'm doing a little undercut bevel. So the feet, um, the sides of the feet meet up nicely at the corners. And uh, I know that the GR Pottery Molds, they do sell like a little wooden tool that they use to kind of compress it there in the corner. But again, I'm just using a paintbrush and using my fingers to really smooth and compress. And again, these forms are leather hard as I'm doing this. They could be, uh, they could be fresh and plastic, but I came back to this later in the day. This one, I am doing a round one. Now, I, I actually could have cut a round circle, but I didn't have enough clay laid out, so I'm just using my strips. <clears throat> Again, you can kind of see the beveled end there, how I put end to end, I bevel it, and then score slip, blend, and then compressing this. Now, when I started to compress this with my fingers, you can see it kind of warped a little bit. I was kind of stretching it, so then I had to like try to put it back into place. Um, I probably should have embedded it a little bit better before I started doing the compression. But it does require, um, you know, some patience and some, uh, some cleanup attention to detail for cleaning these. Now I'm going to set those aside and let the foot rings stiffen up. Now these are fully leather hard. Um, they're, they were actually much more plastic before when I put the foot rings on, but a little stiffer. So here I'm just cleaning up the outer edge with a sure form. If you have any inconsistencies, I'm also beginning to add a little roundness to the edge itself. And now I'm using a notched rib. And I have a video on how to make a notched rib. It's really, it's just a credit card type material where I have cut a nice rounded notch and as long as your form is leather hard or a little bit on the stiff side of leather hard you can drag it along and it cuts a nice little profile that's even and consistent. Uh, here I should have been a little bit more careful because you can see I actually set it in some of the sure form scraps which I did not intend to I just wasn't careful. And here I'm uh, just doing the same thing on the edge as I did on the others. I'm just um, sure forming and then using the notched rib and cleaning up the edge. And for this large round one it has a little bit more cleanup that I need to do. It has some irregularities that I need to just sure form off. I'm also trying to round it a little bit with the sure form before I use the notched rib. And I look for any burrs or places that it sticks up and I'm ribbing those off as well. There's a little something stuck in there. I was pulling that out and then I have to rib over it. Now, the final smoothing is you dip your fingers in water 
and smooth and compress the rim. That compression is so important on smoothing it and making it really, really clean and um, with a great appearance. So same thing on all the edges, dip my fingers in and smooth. When I get to the little oval tray, same thing. I'm kind of pinching and compressing as I do this, so it really helps to give it a really completely smooth appearance. Now I'm on to the handle making part. I'm making two handles for the oval tray, so I really want them to match. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that you have two hunks of clay that are the same size. It, you really don't want to make one and then attempt to make the second one to match. So I am making both of these at the same time. So I'll do a step by step on each one so I can uh, make them as close to identical as possible. So you can see I'm just rolling it into a coil, smoothing it as I go. <clears throat> I just want it to be approximately the width that I need the handle to be. Okay, so I've got two. Now I'm going to use a little roller and I'm going to begin to slowly flatten them. I'm stretching them lengthwise but also widthwise. And then I dipped my fingers in water, compressing and really super smoothing the edge and especially one edge I'm making a little bit skinnier. Now I have a very thin towel which will not leave texture and I'm using my little wooden knife to add a texture. But the thin towel is nice because it kind of adds a subtlety to the texture and a softness so it looks more fabric like and on this one I decided I didn't quite get the texture deep enough on some of them so I did it again all right now it's gonna go at the end so I'm going to arch these and curve them around the end of the piece so I kind of arch it and curve it and it bends around and I have two options with firing this. I can leave them loose and fire it loose and uh, glaze them separately and then stick them on. Or I could slip and score them on when they become the same moisture. I hope you find these tips to be helpful and I hope you enjoy trying drape molding.